uh, when I was in a recent conversation when someone simply said to me, you've got to have hope, haven't you? It, it gives you something to live for, something to get you out of bed, gets you thinking positive, keeps you happy. Well, certainly hope is incredibly important. Uh, we can put our hope in people. Uh, this week, some are hoping that a new prime minister will get us out of our current crisis. We can put our hope in things, those things we have, a, a bigger house, a better car, a fuller wallet, or a finer figure. Uh, we can put our hope in things getting better, that will achieve our potential or land the dream job, that our children will be happy. Our health will get better, or, or certainly not worse. Will I Am is famed to have said that his great hope was getting out of the ghetto. Certainly to have no hope would be unthinkable. But to discover that your hope can't deliver would perhaps be even worse. Jake Simpkins hoped he'd be rescued as he clung on to a cliff face in Zante in Greece just a few years ago. He was jumping off the cliff when his parachute got blown back against the rock. As he held on, various hopes were available to him. Uh, the hopes that his own lines would hold, that he'd be rescued, uh, that the ledge wouldn't give way, that somehow his willpower would keep him alive for his pregnant wife and unborn child. Sadly, after three hours, every one of those hopes let him down as he fell from the cliff to his death. Uh, those other hopes I mentioned uh, will let us down too. People, uh, well, they let us down all the time, don't they? Things, well, they don't last. Uh, we may have hope that things can only get better, but they rarely do. Many stay in the ghettos. Those who make it rich are never satisfied long. Is there any hope that won't fail us in the end? Well, well, the Bible says gloriously, yes. There is a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And that hope is based on historical events, the ones that were read to us just a moment ago. Let me read to you again. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 3 we read, Paul writes, for what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Christ died. That's the first historical event. And certainly in the history records, there is no doubt, this man lived. This man, Jesus, died. No one survived a Roman crucifixion. They certainly knew how to kill people. Historical event one, Jesus died. Historical event two, Jesus was buried. His dead body lay in a stone tomb, wrapped in linen, until the third day. Uh, there'd been rumours that he'd rise, uh, so they feared his followers might try and fake it by stealing the body. Again, the Romans made sure this couldn't happen. A great stone was rolled into the entrance of the tomb. It was sealed with wax and guards placed 24-7 at the entrance. Jesus was buried. Historical event three. Jesus rose and was seen. Life returned to that body. The stone was hurled away. Many saw him. Uh, when this was written, as Paul writes, he, he says to them, uh, you can go and ask them yourself. Many of them are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Now, of course, many have tried to disprove it. The problem is all the evidence. You see, any hope in Jesus is based on these historical events. Events that show him to be God. 
events that show that he can, he really can get you and me through death itself. He's the one we need. And yet we turn our backs on him all the time. Because, you see, his call is simply too difficult. Jesus says, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Love your neighbour as yourself. Uh, can you imagine a home where this command of Jesus is always obeyed? A, a community characterised by this kind of love for God and love for one another. Can you imagine a world where everyone lived like this? Wars would end. Fights would cease. Life would be great. I mean, nobody can argue Jesus' standard is perfect. We just refuse to live by it. Uh, you see, when my hope is in people, I'll do anything to keep them loving me. Uh, my acceptance and theirs becomes more to me than God's. Uh, when things are my hope, I'll climb over anyone to get them or hold on to them. God says, love me. Love my people. And we say, no, get lost. Uh, now, if that was just a school friend in the classroom, it, it wouldn't really matter. But if we squared up to the teacher and said, get lost, it might well get us into trouble. If we defied the head, uh, I guess things would get more serious. But if it was on the most special day of the school's life, as the queen herself was being showed round, get lost. Shouldn't we cower then in fear when our lives have get lost written to God on every page? The Bible calls this sin. It dangles us right there on the cliff. If you accept this, if you acknowledge that that's what our lives do before God, then the death and resurrection of Jesus is everything you need. Why did Jesus die? Do you remember? Jesus died for our sin. That defiance of ours deserves death. But the great news is that we've been hearing already this evening, and I'm sharing with you on the, on the confidence and the authority of God's word, is that Jesus took our death in our place. The Bible says, for Christ died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. I wonder what might the law require of us if we'd been so offensive and disobedient to the queen herself? I guess as I thought about this, something like community service might be appropriate, would seem fair, I suppose. Well, can you even begin to imagine her choosing to do this herself so that you don't have to for your offence against her? And yet that's what God has done for us. We don't have to face the punishment and the death we deserve. Jesus has taken it already. Uh, put your hope in people uh, that they might provide all you hope for, but not if you reject them. Uh, we may hope that things can only get better, but they certainly won't if at least you don't put some effort in. Uh, we may find some joy in our abilities, our looks, our things, but not if we don't look after them. You see, we live in a world where even with our fleeting hopes, we only have any confidence in them if somehow we earn them. And yet the wonder of the hope that Jesus holds out is that he gives you this hope even when you fail him. Jesus is alive. He's coming back. And the hope he holds out is to be with him, to be with God forever. And not only this, to share his glory you see, the Bible says this, when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Uh, just imagine then if the Queen did that community service for you and then invited you to sit next to her next week as she swears in the new Prime Minister. That's a picture, a failing one at best, 
of the hope that Jesus is holding out to all of us. So we have a choice. We can choose hopes that will ultimately fail and destroy us, or Jesus, who never will. In the end, Jake Simpkins didn't have a choice. For the moment, you and I do. Will you turn to Jesus? Will you confess him as the God that you have rejected and the only one who died to save you and introduce you to the God who wants to hold you and share his glory with you for good? That's what we've heard Anna and Elizabeth, Joe and Dean have all done. You can join them. Uh, You can do it right now. Their hope will be yours. I'm going to lead us all in a prayer. It's a simple prayer of confessing our acceptance before God of what we're really like and our great need for him and then choosing to trust our lives to him alone and follow Jesus in all things. I also want to let you know that there are plenty of people here, maybe even someone who brought you, who'd be only too delighted to talk to you more about these things. Then we'll sing and then we'll gather at the water's edge when these four are baptised today. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we come before you this evening as those who deserve nothing from you and yet acknowledge that in Jesus you are offering us everything. We repent of our sin, turning our backs on a life lived without you and embracing Jesus as our master and Lord in all things. We receive your forgiveness and we lay down our lives to follow you, Lord, every step and until you return. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.